Hello and welcome to episode four of CWU Live, our weekly show aimed at connecting with CWU members and beyond. First of all, thanks again for tuning in. Your support means so much to us. Our initial episodes have been a bit postal heavy. Over the course of the year, we can guarantee you a great balance starting today. And with that, today is the moment to cover issues impacting our telecoms and financial services members. We are very lucky to have with us our Deputy General Secretary of Telecoms and Financial Services, Andy Kerr, and our President, Karen Rose. Guys, welcome. How are you? Hi, Omar. Uh, I have some questions for you both, but better than that, we have questions being asked directly from our members. Uh, we'll get to that eventually, but first to kick things off, let's start with you, Andy. Yep. Uh, can you give our members a general update on the key issues that the union's dealing with at the moment? Oh, well, there's a number of issues in, in a number of companies, the, the telecoms financial services. We have a, a recognition of about 28 companies, so we've got a wide uh, variation of areas. I think that probably this is the area where in normal terms of most of the companies were starting the pay round. Uh, most companies are uh, pay round comes round between January and April. So it's, it's the start of that sort of discussion uh, with a number of companies and hopefully we're, we're doing quite well. In BT itself, um, uh, we managed to get a deal last year. Uh, that means that we don't have that uh, negotiations to take place uh, over the next couple of months. Uh, there is a 4% pay rise guaranteed for our members in BT and, that, and that's a good news story, I think. Uh, and we've just uh, also done a deal in Santander, the financial services, uh, which has gave a, a really good pay rise uh, it was above inflation uh, to our members in Santander. So okay. that's probably the biggest a areas that we've got. But we've got a number of, we've, got, we've always got issues, Omar, always get issues in, in telecoms and financial services. It's just a matter of working through them all. Yeah, it's never ending. <laughs> yeah. uh, Karen, you got anything to add to that? Um, well, not really, I guess. I said, you know, Andy's right, it is the pay round and, and actually that's really important to members. There's nothing more important to our members than their, probably their pay, uh, followed by their annual leave and followed by their attendance patterns. So attendance patterns is something that we're always in negotiations with, with some employers. Um, mm. And we've just actually, um, in BT for our operator services uh, guys, the guys who work in voice services, um, which answer the 999 calls, we've mm. just struck an agreement with them um, uh, on new attendance patterns, which actually um, our executive has actually agreed today, and we think that's a really good agreement. There's some attendance discussions going on elsewhere mm. um, in in various different companies. You know, it is a hot topic. It's an emotive thing when people come to work, how they travel to work, how long they stay there, whether th whether they can work from home at all. All of those things are things that we're constantly dealing with because. They're, they're really important, obviously, to our members. It yeah, sounds like it's constantly moving as well, yeah. which is it grand. Is. Um, Andy, Karen is elected to succeed you uh, following the is. CW conference <laughs> this year. Yeah. How do you feel about that? What are your thoughts? Uh, well, it's a mixed uh, vibe. <laughs> uh, just so think about it. She's sitting here, uh, but just think about uh, yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, mean, uh, <laughs> I, I say this because Karen's a good friend of mine. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, and she's a good friend, and she's been a colleague of mine who worked, uh, worked uh, beside her for many, many years. So I, I have no problem with that. I'm, I'm a little bit, there's a little bit of sadness I've been going in, in some mm. respects, but I mean, I'll have done sort of 16 years in this role by that time. Uh, and I think it's long enough. Um, some would say too long. Uh, <laughs> and there's an argument there, but you know, I, look, I don't have any problem with it whatsoever. Karen was the best candidate, uh, somebody I've supported for, uh, for many years and many roles that she's done. I know that she'll, she'll do a great, uh, great job actually, being the DGST. Uh, and I couldn't hand it over to a better person, so I'm really happy in that respect. That's a lot of confidence there. A lot of confidence there. Um, Karen, this is an important role, one that you previously described as an honour? Yeah. It, uh, look, every single role I've ever undertaken in the union has been an honour. Mm. Because ultimately, what we're talking about is my peers have elected me, nominated me, whatever, to undertake a role which is representing them. And that is an honour because that's people rest in their trust in you and and also and you know the their confidence as well I suppose in you as an individual. So it's always an honour. Every single role you ever do for CW members is an honour. Mm. Um, I guess that as you um, or certainly for me as I've been elected first of all nationally to the executive and then later to the role of the chair of the constituency 
and the, therefore the president, and now having been elected as the Deputy General Secretary TNFS to take over um, from Andy, yet it, it does feel an even greater honour because these jobs are not easy jobs mm. and that means people have rested their confidence in you, hopefully, and hopefully I'll do a good job. I'm sure you will. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Uh, I mean, Andy's given you yeah. full confidence in all. his backing. Yeah, so, um, Andy, last year we had the first dispute nationally with BT Group yes. and Openreach um, for almost 40 years or yeah. so. Yeah. How have the relations been um, with the employer since that period? Well, it's a, it's a matter of building up the relationship again uh, with them. The, I mean, I'd certainly broken down with some people in the company. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say with everybody in, in the company, but mm. some people are at a very senior level. I think the, the relationships were definitely strained. Uh, there's no question about that uh, you, uh, with some. But I think, you know, we have to move on uh, uh, from there. And it's maybe not a bad thing. That one thing that you know, Karen's going to come in with you know, a sort of fresh pair of eyes in, in some of the things. And at the same time, BT uh, has got a new uh, CEO uh, coming in. There's a new HR director just come in last year. So there's going to be a, a new. It will be a matter for for Karen to build that relationship up with the new CEO, the new HR director. And I think it's it's there. I think th they want to work with us. Uh, I think. Uh, I mean, I, I always said about the dispute last year, you know, I regretted the dispute, uh, the dispute last year. I, I still believe firmly that it could have been avoided, mm. uh, but uh, it was down to BT to, uh, to avoid it. Uh, they failed, in my, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, we'll get a change of leadership there. The change of leadership in the CW, I think the relationships can be built again. Fresh start then. Um, I think that's enough for me at the moment. Uh, we're going to turn to our members and ask them Ask questions from them to you guys, rather. Uh, pay is on everyone's lips constantly with the ongoing cost of living crisis. Uh, here's Yayan Davis from Openreach. Hi, Karen and Andy. It's Yayan Davis here from Openreach. We're wondering if there's any update on pay as inflation keeps changing and April is fast approaching. Also, is there any update on unagreed pay grades? Appreciate that, mate. Um, so, pay. Um, Andy, then Karen, if that's all right. Uh, any news on open reach pay and pay negotiations in any other companies? We have done a, a, a pay deal in last September, uh, gave people a, a, a two and a half percent pay rise then. There's another four percent coming in April. Uh, I think that that's a, a good news story. It should be there or thereabouts on, on uh, inflation, uh, and we'll work on that. Uh, but I think it's it's guaranteed. There was, a, you know, we don't have to go through that that process again. At least we've got it in the bag. It's guaranteed. We will get it in the first of April. Everybody knows they'll get four percent. Mm. Regards to the second part of Yain's uh, uh, question, uh, the discussions we've been having around about the structures and uh, in open reach and wider BT, uh, they are progressing. Uh, a lot slower than we would have liked. I think Karen would agree with that. A lot slower than we would have liked. But th this is fairly complex uh, uh, situation we're in. But I think uh, it'd be safe to say, I think, Karen, that we will be able to speak to the activists at least uh, by the sort of towards the end of this month. Um, uh, and we we'll hopefully uh, will have a deal uh, that we can discuss with the membership uh, within the next few few weeks. I wouldn't say a few months. I mean, I'm hoping weeks rather than months. Uh, it might be go beyond February. I'll, give, I'll say that. Uh, but we're close. Uh, this is... This won't give everybody a pay rise. I don't think we should say that to anybody to, to expect that. But what it will do uh, is make it si this grading structure simplified within the company. It'll make it <coughs> consistent within the company, and that's the big issue. Making it consistent across whether you work for open reach, whether you work for uh, business services, whether you work for networks. Uh, if you're an engineer, for example, and you do a similar role, you should be paid the same amount of money. That's not what's there today. Uh, and that's what we're trying to achieve. And I think we can, we, we're hopeful we can get there by, you know, in the next few weeks. So watch this space, I think, Yang. Cheers for that, Andy. Um, Karen, do you agree? Uh, probably expecting movement in weeks rather than months? Yeah, oh, well, hopefully. You know, um, it is something we've been working on for a very long time. It was, as Andy has kind of mentioned, really, it was very, it was, it's been far more complex. I think that trying to resolve the grading structure in BT, I think, well, basically we've got, hundreds of different roles if not thousands um, yeah. and the, what we've tried to do is have an element of consistency in the new kind of gradient structure in that people will be equally valued in terms of the pay they get 
for equally valued work. Mm. So that's been complex to get into. Um, but we have made some good progress. Hopefully we're making some inroads and um, we've got meetings in, over the next couple of weeks which uh, we hope will give us something that we can present then um, at least to our branches, our, our activists, so that they can have a view as to where we've got to. Okay. Wonderful. So they'll keep a look out for that then. Yeah. Yep. Great. Uh, now, we touched on this earlier, the dispute in BT Group and Openreach. It was very bitter. Let's hear from Darren. Hi Andy and Karen, my name's Darren, I work for Openreach. The dispute last year was very difficult and tough. It's not some of my colleagues' confidence in the union. I was just wondering how we go about rebuilding that. Excellent Darren, cheers for that. Uh, Karen and Andy this time, yeah. how do we rebuild from this dispute? Well, look, I, I think that it, th this is something that I am quite passionate about really, because what Darren has just said there is he said, it's not their confidence in the union, yeah. but they are the union, right? So our members, are, they are the people that make up this organization. That it's not me, it's not Andy, it's not all of the people at headquarters, it's not even the people in our branches. Mm. Our members are the union. So really, w what I think is really important is that when they're saying they've, lo they've lost confidence in the union, really, to, to me, that's almost saying they've lost confidence in themselves because actually an awful lot of this is, is, is about what they can do, what they can do in order to, um, to, to make us stronger, to make, us, to make the, the things that we fight for um, more successful. The, I think people need to participate more because what we find is that during the dispute, it was absolutely fabulous how we had so many people turning up on the picket lines, people actually turning up to meetings, whether they were online or whether they were face to face. You had people participating in the union and there is no doubt that our strength comes from the numerous people that mm. will, you know, take part and actually show that show, show a strength. So I suppose what I would say to people who said they've lost confidence is actually, well, you need to get involved more. You need to get involved in this union. Make yourself one of the people that's prepared to make a difference. It's almost like be the change you want to see. Mm. You know, really is actually quite important that our members in the CWU understand that they are part of this union and they can make a difference. Yeah. Okay. I uh, appreciate that. Um, Andy, do you think the same? Uh, is it yeah. more about participation or is there something else that can be done as well? Well, well no, I, I agree obviously with everything that Karen has said and it, it, it is, you know, Karen's going to be involved in building that. Yeah, no, I, I can understand there's a little bit of knock of confidence. One thing I would say to Darren and to everybody else who are members of the CW, go out there make sure that everybody else in your workplace is also a member. That's the really important thing uh, out there. You know, we, 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 the last time when we did have the industrial action, yes, there was some people who went to work who weren't members. Well, that's just not unacceptable. BT have to understand, and they do understand, that if we need to take action, we will take action. And I'm sure that's going to be continued in the future. We don't want to do it, but we have to use that action if and if and we indeed we need it. But the main thing is, is to build the membership up, get everybody in, get them participating, as Karen has quite, cl uh, quite clearly said there, and let's hear from the members. What is it they want? One of the things that I think we're going to start to move on, and maybe the, the membership will start to get a bit more confidence in us, is a bit more of a proactive agenda. Mm. We're fed up, Karen and I are fed up, uh, whether it's BT, whether it's other companies, sitting back, waiting to, re to react to management. Well, like those days are gone as far as we're concerned. Now's the time for us to start to set our agenda and start campaigning on our agenda. And that's the time I think the confidence will start to build again in the membership, yeah. and we need to grow the membership. Got you. No, I appreciate that. Thank you guys for that. Um, now, outrageously, we saw the outgoing CEO of Capita saying the company would no longer pay the real living wage. Lawrence talks about it here. Andy, hi Karen. My name is Lawrence McIntosh. Uh, I'm part of the Preston, Brook and Berry retail branch in the Northwest. Um, we work under Capita and they couldn't even move themselves as a real living wage employer. That naturally has an impact on the cost of living crisis to our members right across the union. Um, I was just wondering, what is it that the CWU can do to assist with this? Um, naturally, it's going to put a lot of financial pressures onto our members uh, and an impact that's just unknown at the moment. And just as a final piece, is uh, just to say congratulations to Kevin for the DDS 
um, position. And Andy, thanks for all your commitments over the years. I uh, hope you have a really happy retirement. Thanks. Well, some congrats in there from Lawrence. Uh, but a serious question too. This is shocking from Capita. If we can start with you, Andy. Firstly, on Capita, but I guess also uh, more widely in the issue of demanding the real living wage in multiple employers. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, that's the, the issue for us. I think, you know, Capita is the one that's it's come up uh, quite clearly uh, in, in recent weeks. Uh, and I think they should be ashamed of themselves, uh, Capita, quite frankly. But they're not the only company. Uh, there's other companies out there uh, loads of other companies uh, who don't pay the living wage at all. And if I even take uh, BT as a bigger employer, BT, you know, they do pay over the living wage. They do pay uh, potentially round about the uh, the very lowest levels, round about the real living wage. Mm. But they won't sign up to the real living wage uh, uh, commitment, if you like. And that's because, and the reason that some of these companies do it is because to sign up to that, not only have you got to have your, your own employees uh, on that rate of pay, but the contractors you use, they have to be on that rate of pay, or subcontractors or whatever. And capital is that. That's exactly what capital is. It's a subcontractor to many, many companies in, in Britain. Most people don't understand this uh, about capital. Capital actually, you know, they've got contracts with 30, 40, 50 different companies, and uh, some of them really reputable companies uh, in, in, in uh, the UK. Mm. So they are, they are. They had set up to the real living wage, they reneged on it. And I think that's a backward trend. That's a you know quite clearly the race to the bottom. And I think you know in my position is I know Karen and I have had a chat about this over the last couple of days. We do believe it's something that the CW should campaign on. You know we shouldn't necessarily. Yes, we should criticise Capita and any other company who's done that exactly the same as Capita. But this is you know, part of a campaign we should be running across all employers. You know certainly the, the employers that we represent in CW. But even the wider, the wider movement, it's about times, you know, not just the CW stands up and fights about this, other unions should get involved in it too. We're signing up to, we've signed up to a new deal for workers. And when the Labour government comes in, and when I, and I was right what I said there, when, not if, but when the Labour government comes in, we'll hold them uh, to account on the new deal for workers. And crucial to that is the real living wage as far as I'm concerned. So this is a big campaign that we can run. And I think that we can, CW can take a bit of a lead in this one. That's a strong intent there. Um, Karen, what do you think? I, I'm actually quite interested in how companies like Capita feel as if they can, you know, renew on this, like um, like Andy said, you know, go back on it. Why do they have the confidence to do so? Look, well, I think there's several reasons they have the confidence to do so, but I think Andy said it. It's about the race to the bottom, right? So basically mm. what you have is you have all of these competition, com uh, sorry, companies in competition with each other and you have an awful lot of outsourcing companies and we see them paying low wages right because what they're trying to do is they're trying to drive down the cost of of the contracts because they're trying to be competitive with each other so it is a race to the bottom and the only way that we're going to tackle it i guess is to have that wider campaign we've talked about having um you know recruiting people to trade unions for example that's where we start that's where we make sure when you when you recruit members in, into a trade union you've got an option then of having a campaign across sectors for example mm. so capita look they've got lots of contracts they do lots of different things they work in lots of sectors but the sector that we most ha mo most have to do with in the cw is the call center sector right and there's other companies that um like convergence and like teleperformance who also run uh, contact centres and they're all trying to compete with each other for the contracts and therefore driving the wages down so it is indicative of where we are I think that the environment we've got with the current government actually allows companies to do these things I think it's absolutely appalling actually when you see how many people are living in poverty now mm -hmm. and how many people are really struggling because even you know the minimum wage the real living wage actually people are still struggling they still can't afford to live on those you know it, on those incomes basically and so i think the the confidence comes from the environment and i think this government has created an environment which allows it far more than um than it's bit that than they've been able to do previously and Andy's right I think what we need is look the Labour Labour Party have signed up to the New Deal for Workers mm -hmm. that's one of their flagship campaigns hopefully you know 
that that will be something that will resonate with people and that will be the start in introducing better terms and conditions and better wages for workers in this country. Just picking up some, uh, on something Andy said as well, um, communicating with other unions across different sectors as well, is that something that the CWU is looking to do uh, in order to help make this happen? I, th- I think we have to. Hmm. I think that um, we we have to get we almost have to galvanize as a trade union movement in order to tackle some of the things that are happening now it's not just cwu members Mm. it's workers in actually in all sectors in the uk at the moment that are actually being um i suppose finding themselves at the mercy of what i would say is opportunist employers who are exploiting workers just because they can I appreciate that. Um, now, let's stick with call centres, actually, um, as it was briefly mentioned, and the ongoing and historic threat of offshoring work. Let's hear from CWU member Arthur. Hello, Andy and Karen. I'm Arthur, one of the call centre members. I'm always worrying about the offshoring of jobs and my job security. What can the union do to help me with this? Karen, what would you say to Arthur on this case? Well, we had a great debate at the... Uh, BT executive meeting this morning um, and actually something that we're going to take forward to the telecoms and financial services executive and we've agreed to kind of look at that Mm. in what we do as a union in terms of developing a strategy that actually addresses the offshoring of work because again these what we're seeing is work is work is being sent offshore in the case of BT, for example, is mainly to India or to Hungary, mm. right? There's no doubt that it's being done on the basis of cost because they can get it done cheaper abroad. Mm. Whether it's better is a whole other thing. We also know that from years ago that customers, BT's customers in the UK, didn't like um, didn't like the offshoring of work mm. uh, for lots of reasons. Actually, some of it was purely about communication and about kind of you know being able to um, get their point across because there's because there's cultural differences which means that when people use what would be um, kind of common terms in the UK they wouldn't necessarily translate into an English pe- pe- speaking person that you know lives abroad yeah. so some of those things were valid concerns but also um, you know actually <laughs> customers were complain were, were, were concerned because that you see an awful lot about um, scams that take place in the UK and they genuinely would get a call from somebody who who didn't sound as if they were in the UK and they would feel as if they were um, they were victims of scams or whatever and I and I think that's because of the because there has been a culture of those type of cold calls mm. um, in the UK so we had, we had a really good debate this morning and what we're going to look at now is what we can do in terms of a strategy to try to address some of these concerns, particularly with the employers where we've got recognition and we've got an in to talk to them because there is no doubt about it that it's an it's outrageous uh, to us that people in this country are being made redundant mm. while the work that they're doing is being sent offshore. And that can't be right, particularly in companies where the, where the majority of their profits and their customer base is in the UK and so we think that it, when that's the case, it, the work should remain in the UK as well. Got you. Okay, thanks for that. Arthur, there you go. A plan is brewing. Um, keep keep note. Um, just keep your eyes on this. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Andy, we heard last week uh, at the Young Workers Conference that delegates who work for Open Reach mm-hmm. were discussing rumours that the company were thinking about installing inward-facing cameras in yes. cabs. Let's hear from Paddy, an Open Reach member in Northern Ireland on this. Hi, Andy and Karen. My name is Paddy Mayne. I am an Open Reach field engineer based in Northern Ireland. I've heard a bit about plans to have inward facing cameras in our van cabs. Surely this isn't right, and we have to make sure it doesn't happen. Well, that sounds serious, Andy. Maybe something to be concerned about. Um, what's your take on this issue? Agreed. I agree with Paddy. It's as, it's as simple as that, Paddy. Uh, and I'm glad you've asked the question. My, uh, my position in this one has been clear right from the beginning. We have no problem with dash cams. 
facing outwards. Now let me be clear about that first of all. So outward facing dash cams, we have no problem with uh, because it can actually safeguard some of our members if they're accused of doing an accident or whatever and they haven't done something wrong, we know there's evidence of that it happened in the past. So we don't have any problem with that. The issue is the inward facing. Uh, and in the company uh, is say to us they have evidence that it saves uh, sort of twenty five percent of of accidents. Uh, we have asked that, uh, the company now for I think best part two months, maybe more than two months now for the evidence. They're still waiting for the evidence. So they've just made this claim and provided well, they made no a claim, back. yeah, but we've have never seen the evidence and we've asked for it. We've asked it on numerous occasions. So, uh, you know, one is on them to prove it for a start. Mm. But even if they did, I, I would still personally have an issue with it. I think there's an issue of privacy in it. Mm. And they do also quote about other companies who do this, but they're not quote, quoting, it's not comparing apples with apples here. You know, they're talking about probably long distance drivers, uh, lorry drivers, etc. These are open reach engineers who go from one job to another, from many jobs during the day, mm. short periods of, uh, of work. Uh, there is no need for this at all. Uh, it's an invasion of privacy as far as I'm concerned. I don't believe, unless somebody can show me the evidence, I don't believe there's any evidence that, that cuts down uh, accidents. If anything, I would say, if you knew you would have been filmed all day long, mm. Would you not think it would tense you up? Would you not think it would cause a bit of anxiety? I think, I would give you the argument, it would actually probably cause more accidents rather than less. Mm -hmm. No, I've got nothing to prove it. But then again, BT's never proved the other way we're about. So uh, you know, I'll keep arguing the, the case for them. I, I just don't think, that, I, th I just think it's an invasion of privacy. Uh, and what, and the other questions have been asking about this, even if they did get it in, mm -hmm. what are they using the data for? This is the, the whole issue about AI and all the rest of it. Who owns the data? Is it BT? Is it open which owns the data? Or is it some other company that's providing it? What are they going to do with the data that they, they use? And, and should people actually be filmed eating their lunch uh, in, in a van? Because that's, you know, for open reach engineers, that's the, that is the workplace. You know, they, it's not as if they can go into a, a cafe, restaurant or whatever. Because of the way they work, quite often in rural, especially, you know, talking about Northern Ireland and Bay Paddy, a lot of rural areas, these guys sit uh, in the van, you know, the, the lunch break, have the lunch, and they're, they're being filmed eating the lunch. I don't think that's acceptable uh, at all. So, Paddy, we will be fighting this all the, all the way, and hopefully, we can get your support and many other people's support for it. Wonderful. Thanks, Andy. I'm actually quite curious what that evidence is. No, so uh, I. Do you give us a shout when, when it does come in eventually, if it ever does? We certainly will. <laughs> uh, Karen, now it's absolutely vital that the union is as representative of its members as possible. Let's hear from Elaine. Hi Andy and Karen, my name is Elaine. I would like to know how more women could become involved with the CWU. Many thanks. Straightforward question there. Um, Karen, how do we get more people involved in the CWU? Not only for true representation of members, but I imagine also there are probably some issues um, that are going undiscovered that you know, wouldn't be the case if more women got involved and whatnot. Um, do you think your election now will also help with that? I hope so. Um, look, at the end of the day, I think people are encouraged to do something when they see almost like people who look like themselves, really. So look, I, I do think that, that the key to having more women involved in the union is actually having women, you know, but it, it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation, isn't it? Um, certainly know that from the time when I started out many, many years ago, I do know that definitely I went from being one of the only women sitting in a room to to actually far more women sitting in a room. So mm. I do think that when women get involved, you know, it does encourage other women to get involved. Um, but I also think that, look, we're a very male dominated union because actually probably 70 to 80 percent of our membership is male. Right. So that so that's not it's easier said than done, really, because you've got a much smaller population of women in order to, um, you know, uh, make sure that they're n naturally very involved. So I think we have to have an exercise where we go and ask women to get involved. I think we have to encourage them personally. Mm. And I think and I think that probably just does take other women to do that. So I I, genu I genuinely, I, I, by the way, I'm not saying that men don't encourage women to be involved in the union because I wouldn't be here sitting today if it wasn't for some of my male colleagues because it was definitely male colleagues who encouraged me to take part 
and and to become active and also male colleagues who have been really supportive to me so I'm not being critical of that whatsoever um, and I'm not saying that men don't encourage women mm. to get involved I just think that there are the things that are unique and I also think that some of the stuff that we do culturally kind of might put women off in lots of ways because if if you're going out to say you're going out to evening meetings and you're on your own and you haven't got company you haven't got other women for company I think sometimes that's quite difficult but but over the last few years particularly after the pandemic a lot of our um engagement we were able to do over online platforms and actually we did see more women getting involved in that mm. because they were able to just kind of log in from their home you know their home environment so i think look i i would certainly hope to do some work that would encourage more women to get involved in the union mm. i think it's important i think easy for me to say perhaps but i think women do bring a different perspective i think they do offer something which offers a diversity of even thought processes not just about being female and sat in a room mm. i think it's really important i think there's value in it to to the union and to its membership so it, it to me it is vital that's wonderful uh, hopefully more people do get more involved here it would yeah, be absolutely. lovely if that did happen um one for both of you now mm -hmm. the importance of young workers getting involved in the union let's hear from anthony Hi, Karen and Andy. I'm Anthony. I'm a youth worker for the Capital Branch. Uh, could you please tell me how I can get more involved in the union to support our members? Wonderful. Andy, surely if the union's going to have a future, we have to bring through more younger representative and members, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah absolutely. I mean, I, I, I think we have done, and certainly in the TNFS, we, we'll done a bit of work to encourage young members I think we have uh, and you know quite, I'm, I'm quite proud of it mm -hmm. uh, in some respects but there's a lot more to do uh, so Anthony is right in that respect uh, you know we do listen to, to young workers we have encouraged them we have brought them along uh, we make sure now there's one in the, at least one young worker on the executive we have done that in some other of the structures in the organization to make sure young people uh, are getting get involved branches to be fair to branches they have encouraged most branches now have got uh, young worker representatives uh, some have got a lot of young worker representatives and that's great i mean these are the these are, these are the people of the future as far as i'm concerned but that's a reason a, a statement that's used quite often that these, these are the people of the future actually they're the people of the present mm -hmm. uh, and if you look at the demographics certainly in the tnfs constituency if you look at the demographics there uh, it's, it's quite it's remarkably changed over the last few years uh, especially open reach engineers a lot younger than they used to be uh, and call center workers predominantly are young uh, workers there's people who because of the churn in call centers people uh, uh, do move out uh, and move on of course we've got uh, people of all ages uh, in these two areas but there's a lot more young people in there and uh, and Karen said something just a minute ago about women uh, and bringing a different perspective to things yeah no young workers bring a different perspective to mm -hmm. things you know and what young workers expect from the company mm -hmm. uh, from their terms and conditions their wages what the, uh, the young workers expect from the union is different from maybe somebody of my age what uh, my expectation is i've had my life in some respects you know I, i've managed to have a you know a decent job for you know if i was a, still an open each engineer for a long number of years and is still in the job for a long number of years i've managed to get through that but these young workers now starting out a completely different environment for young workers you know getting onto the housing ladder uh, you know the, the cost of living all the other pressures that, that young workers are under well, they need to tell us about these things. And it's not for me or even for Khan to say what young workers, what, what's good for young workers. That's why we, we encourage young workers because we want to know from them what is it they expect and what is it we can do for you. So Anthony, get involved, get other people involved in your branch, get along to the branch meetings, you know, make sure your voice is heard there. Uh, and your opinions are put across and, and let it feed up uh, uh, to the people like Carl is going to take over uh, and, and that's just, uh, you know start the, the again this is this proactive thing that we're, we're talking about mm. let's hear what is it they want you know and, and, and it's no longer should we be saying for somebody who's in their 50s whatever uh, tell us what, you know, what's good for young workers young workers will tell us what's good for young workers 
Thank you very much. No, I appreciate it. So that's the theme of the show, isn't it? Being proactive, getting yeah. involved as much as you can. So if you please can, please do. Um, I want to say thank you to every member who asked a question there. You did a fantastic job. And we're really keen to get more questions from members. So keep an eye out for details of our show on February the 29th for more details on that. Now, I've got a few more questions uh, for you guys. So here we go. We're going to move on to recruitment. <laughs> It is vital that we get as many members as possible into the union. You've already touched on that. Um, we face so many different challenges. We have huge density in companies like OpenReach, face transient workforces in call centers, challenges of AI, for instance. Uh, how does the union recruit in all of these environments? Karen, what do you think? I think we have to adapt our methods to suit the circumstances. Right. So. Um, there's nothing better, there's no doubt that there's nothing better than a face-to-face -face conversation, for example, with our field engineers, right? So getting out there and trying to uh, track down the engineers in the field in terms of recruiting them, that is the ideal thing because those people do appreciate uh, being spoken to face-to-face. -to -face. But we also have a whole load of uh, workers these days who either work from home or work partly from home and not necessarily based in one particular workplace and so we have to we, we have we have actually been working on different methods of recruiting those type of people electronic forms and methods and also um you know i suppose the key is you find people in those workplaces to then become the advocates for the union so mm. look we have to look at different methods to address the different populations across all the sectors where we represent people in order to recruit them because it's not it's just not the same these days as it was when I first started work when basically I went in and the HR manager said to me you have to sign this form for the union because it was a closed shop which meant you had to be a union member to accept the job you know it's not like that these days I wish it was you know <laughs> actually ideally you know maybe we should campaign for closed shops again you know so everybody has to make, be a member of a trade union but um, everybody look there's ne I always keep saying this recently, there's never been a better time to join a trade union. Mm. It is the trade unions that are actually going to make the difference in terms of the quality of people's pay and terms and conditions. It is the trade unions that are going to be a campaign and you can see that from the fact that as a CWU and you know our General Secretary Dave, he was on the show a few weeks ago and he made the point that the New Deal for Workers for example, that was a CWU campaign mm -hmm. and now you can see that it's the flagship campaign for, for you know the Labour Party in the UK because trade unions really make a difference, they've always made a difference throughout society. Mm -hmm. Um, and throughout, you know, and throughout history, so it it we we have to adapt. But what what I would also say is that we have a whole army of people out there. Going back to a point that I made earlier about the members mm -hmm. and about them getting more involved, and actually everybody who's a member of this union, if they were to just ask their colleagues, "Are you a member of the union?" and take that take up that mantle of actually making sure that we expand the membership mm. because there is no doubt that our strength comes from the numbers and from the density that we that we manage that we manage to reach you know in different companies so uh, every one of us has to look at what we do in terms of recruiting people in the future um and it, it's i guess that I, I think is incumbent on all of us but we also have to look at how we adapt and how we change and how we do things that fit the modern world yeah. because it's not the same as it was 30 years ago, 20 years ago or even 10 years ago. We are in different work environments these days and, and as a trade union we have to adapt to make sure that we're still able to recruit those people yeah. regardless of where their workplace is and represent them and make a difference to the world of work. Would you agree with that, Andy? Yeah, I, I would agree. With, there's, a, there's a lot of things. Karen's right. You know, we need to adapt. Uh, have we got the answer to all this? The answer's no. We, we don't have the answer to it all. We're working on it. Uh, we, you know, we try things out. Some, some work, some don't. And if they don't work, that's great. We put it to the side. We move on. But we listen to other people. You know, so we listen to to others who have recruited in some of these areas. How are they doing it? Exactly. You know, winning 
sort of best practice in, in some respects. I mean, that, we've sort of said to our people, you know, go and try things. Mm. And feed it back to us. Share it with, with others round about, different branches. Uh, it, it becomes. But one of the big things uh, for me is, you know, is understanding uh, the, the collective. That's the big issue, is understanding the collective. We need to get density. You know, come back to some of the questions that I asked earlier. Would we have got these some of these pay rises we got over the last two or three years had we only had forty percent density uh, in open reach or BT? Well, the answer is no, we wouldn't, because the company wouldn't have sat up and listened to us. The fact that we've got you know high eighties into nineties in, in some areas the uh, percent density means that we're, we're strong. Means that the union uh, is there. The company do sit up and pay attention, some more than others, I've got to say, uh, but they do pay attention to us. And that's the, the struggle we've got to go on. I'll say to people in EE, for example, do you really believe that over the last two years when we have achieved, coming, coming, this coming April, potentially up to about 24% pay rise from where they were two years ago to where they're going to be in April, would that have been achieved if it wasn't for the CWU? And I'll tell you, the answer to that is definitely no. So get out there, recruit your fellow workers. Uh, and, and as Karen said earlier, the best thing to do is get members to speak to members yeah. to join. There's no point, there's no point. Karen can't go and recruit, you know, thousands of members. I can't go and recruit thousands of members. We need people to do it. And yeah, we can get the activists to do it. We can get some organisers that work for the union to help us out in that respect. But we need members to talk to members. Yeah. And that's the real thing, because that's the, that's the people that work beside. And, and that's the uh, understanding. And what we can do, you know, through comms and all the rest of it, is show the uh, 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 people what this union does, not just under terms and conditions and pay, which is very, very important to them. And it is. And that's the main reason we are, we are here. But also, what does this union do in the wider movement? What do we? And you know, new deal, deal for workers. We've said two or three times tonight. You know, CWU should, uh, should be really proud of this. Because it was Dave Ward and others who pushed this at the TUC. So it was adopted by the TUC, it's adopted by the Labour Party. Mm. The CWU were at the forefront of that. We're not, we weren't necessarily alone, but we were at the forefront of that. So we are proud of what we have done. We can do a lot more campaigning uh, wise out there. Uh, in, uh, for the, you know, because people have a, a social conscience. Many are young people think about you know the the green issues etc you know these are massive to the to, to young people and quite rightly massive to young, uh, young people you know unions have to get in the back of that yeah. and that's some of the things that you know we have to use some of these areas to encourage uh, young workers especially to join us yeah so it's communication encouragement but Absolutely. also it comes back to it as it has multiple times uh, this show being proactive yes. so yeah. um karen i want to ask about representatives what more can be done to support them they're meeting new members every day sorry meeting members every day rather they are the face of the union last week we heard from our senior deputy general secretary uh, on restructuring are there plans to enhance our support for reps as well look we're always looking at ways to enhance the support for reps and that comes in many forms right because it's not just a kind of one-to-one -one chat and give that kind of support we're looking at mentoring schemes but we're also we're looking at the support systems that we put in place like for example we've got a new membership system um, mm. in the CWU and that's going to make a difference in terms of support for, for, for reps we're looking at ways that we can have like w the ways that we can use technology Right, so that enhances and gives support for reps. We look at how we produce um, information, right, and that can be in electronic form now, yep. um, in 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 lots of ways. And we look at what we can produce in in that respect, in terms of equality and diversity. You know, we we produce stuff for for our reps on that um, front. So we're always looking at ways that we can better support the reps because the truth is the more you support the reps the more they can support the members and the more the members then uh, at, see the absolute value in being a member of the CWU mm. so we, it is something we're always looking at it is something we need to do I think that probably what we've been looking at is how we have more interactive more of an interactive relationship with the reps what we've tried to do is to put structures in place in TNFS that means that we have more feedback that comes from the grassroots closer to the members so we you know that that kind of is is a two-way street so not only are we passing information down but they're passing information up mm. and so those are the things that I think we're trying to do to support those people that, that are really 
in the face of the members every day representing them and they are an absolutely vital part of the structure you know the CW wouldn't survive without the local reps mm. and it they are hugely valued and I think we just need to make sure that we give them what they need but also they need to tell us what they need yeah and it's you know that's that's the most important thing and it's as you say they're absolutely vital and because of that we always need more reps so Andy what would your message be to any member that's considering you know stepping up do it do it no, yeah <laughs> I mean, just know, do it yeah just do it is it, it, is somebody one famous to say but anyway but no I think it is I think you you have to get uh, your voice heard uh, so get along to meetings uh, you know I'm not saying make a nuisance of yourself. You shouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> but I did when I started. Uh, it started out. Uh, but uh, but you have to you know sort of make your voice heard. Let people know you you, are, you aren't just going away. You're not, especially as I say, keep on back to the young young reps, uh, young people out there who are involved. You know, don't be uh, sort of uh, in some way frightened of, of of reps that have been there for a long number of years. You know, we're trying to encourage. And there's a, we've got a lot of good reps who are of, of a certain age, or let's say a bit older, who are encouraging young people. They are doing it, you know. And it's not a question of you know getting somewhere and pulling up the ladder so somebody doesn't get there. We have to keep you know reviving uh, 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 areas, especially at a local level. And it, it's not all about sometimes in, in some of the companies we've got is union facilities, so you get time off sort of work to do union facilities. That's not what about. When I started out, and I believe it's the same nowadays, I was a workplace rep. Mm -hmm. was, I had none of that. And I'll tell you, when I used to work in, in, in my area, nothing moved unless I was involved in those discussions. Mm -hmm. And that was only because I spoke to my, my fellow workers uh, and they came to me for a bit of advice, a bit of support, and we stuck together and, and we got things done. But being a local rep, being the, somebody who's just the ears uh, and eyes for us uh, uh, in, in the workplace is absolutely essential. You know, just as essential as somebody who's a brand secretary or somebody else. We need to know what, exactly what the feeling is out there. And as Karen says, uh, you know, we're trying to build this really two-way street. Again, Karen, when Karen and I started out, uh, you know, head office was a, you know, was one of those things we nobody knew what, what went on there. It was, <laughs> it was full of mystic and, and God knows what else was it used to happen in these head offices. We've been trying to be more transparent over the last few years, and I think we've, we've done it. Could we be better? Maybe we can. You know, that's up to others to judge that, not necessarily us to judge it. But we're trying to be as transparent as possible as in trying to get that two-way communication. And that's the really important thing. And I tell you, new technology is great for this. That's the bit that we can do. We, you know, when it was, you know, before we had, you know, back before we even had mobile, was never been anything else. You know, when it was letters going about, you never had that communication going back and forward. Nowadays, you know, WhatsApps, group chats, you know, a video uh, conference and all the rest of the stuff that we can use, we can get that two-way uh, interaction that we that we never had before yeah. and we should use it much, much more. Thank you both. Uh, I understand you. You know, there's you been a, a load of questions thrown at you, <laughs> uh, but before I let you go, we're going to move on to something a little less serious, which is our regular feature on the spot. Uh, you two are very lucky here. You couldn't help each other out with your answers. Uh, each week we will ask our main guest, or this week guests, to answer the same five questions. So guys, are you ready? I'll yeah. try. Yeah? <laughs> All right. Don't worry, it's not that bad. A uh, little bit of pressure. Uh, if you were elected Prime Minister, what would be the first thing that you would do? Who wants to start? I'd, in I'd introduce the New Deal for Workers. God, actually, that was a bit of <laughs> <laughs> She's stopping that now. You need to come up with something just as impressive. Come on. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I would ban the Conservative Party. Uh, uh, probably it would be the first thing. No, I, I, I joke at that. But no, I, I think you know, getting workers' rights uh, up there in the agenda and the first uh, guaranteed uh, is one of the things I, I, would, I would definitely do. And I think you know, and, and, and getting the government to uh, adopt a better, greener. Uh, uh, commitments and they have any political party in this country has got, got at the moment I think is a massive issue. Second, if you weren't in your current jobs or roles, what would you do? I think I'd probably bake. Bake? <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I'd probably be. I'd have yeah. a bit like that as yeah. well. Yeah, I remember many years ago, my friend and I used to joke about the fact that we used to do, between us, we used to cater for everybody's parties. And we always said if we ever lost our jobs, that that's what we'd do. we set up a little catering company. We'd make sandwiches and cakes for people. Really? Yeah. What about yourself, Andy? If I, if I hadn't been, uh, I'm sure that if I hadn't uh, sort of moved on in the, the trade union movement, I definitely would have been more heavy, more involved, and I'm involved, but more involved in politics. Mm. And uh, yeah, I would have loved to have been in Parliament. In Parliament? I'm sure that would be easier than being United's manager, to be fair. So three <laughs> items that you would take with you to a desert island. See, when you talk about a desert island, I've got pictures of the beach, the sea, sunshine and, and palm trees. So I definitely have to take my SPF. Okay. Because, you know, I don't want any more wrinkles than I've already got. Okay. I definitely, <laughs> no, some I de protection is serious. I, de I, definitely take, <laughs> yeah. I definitely take that. And, um, yeah, well, there wouldn't be a lot to do with it. So I'd probably have to take a book. Mm. Um, One book? Uh, several books, probably. I'd probably just take my Kindle and load it yeah, up. There we go. Yeah, yep. yeah, that's what I probably do. And... Um, there's going to be a sea there, isn't there? So I, I do you know what? I'd take my snorkel and mask because I could while away the hours then just, you know, looking Swimming at... through and catching yeah, your food line. Yeah, because, kind of because this desert island that I'm on is, you know, s surrounded by a coral reef and there's all those lovely fish. Wait, I was about to say, you know, <laughs> technically the Antarctica's a big desert as well, so yeah, you could no, go completely not the Not the one way. I'm on, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you forget yeah. to pick your island. It's a little paradise, yeah, exactly. Uh, what would I do, do with me here? Actually, I'd probably, I'd love, I'd, I'd probably want to, I don't know how you keep the batteries going right now, but I'd love a radio. Yeah? Yeah, because I, I think radio music, whether it's music, whether it's, I, I'm a big fan of Radio 4, uh, actually, so I, I like listening to uh, uh, the radio a lot. Uh, so, yeah, a radio would be good, but it'd be great company if I'm, I'm, I suspect I'm only there myself. I mean, paper, paper and a pen or paper and a pencil is another one, because mm. uh, I'm always doodling uh, are doing something, uh, most of which uh, never comes to you know never comes to fruition. But I I I, I come up with, I believe they're great ideas at times. But as I say, they, then when I work them through, they're usually not uh, at all. But pen and paper, uh, it would be good just to write. And I'm trying to think of a third one. What it would take as a uh, as a third one? Mm. Um, sun cream. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna steal Karen's answer, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, sun cream, but not necessarily the same, the same stuff that uh, Karen would use. <laughs> Different brand, yeah. A bit of L'Oreal instead. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> clans, a bit of clans. Yeah. <laughs> um, your f signature karaoke tune? I don't think I've ever really, no, I think I, I did take part in a karaoke once and I was completely booed off stage, so I wouldn't go near karaoke at all. It's got to be something that, you know, when you're getting ready in the morning, you're in the shower, you're just, oh you're bowing out a little bit because you know you're alone, or you think you are, but your wife can hear you in the other room. Well, what are you singing? Who, I'm trying to think of who would say was, uh, is a favourite one of mine, but... Uh, we can come back to you in a sec. The Stones. You, the Stones. Something from The Stones, yeah. yeah. I mean, Give Me Shelter is, is a record that I, I, I absolutely love, and it reminds me of lots of things. Yeah. Good things. Good things. Just because I've played it when I've been in different places and memories it brings back to me so yeah I love that I love that it's very personal all right what about you Karen so I am the exception to the rule when it comes to being Welsh I can't sing <laughs> I avoid karaoke like the plague you know, I right I have been known to storm out of places when people think they're going to put a microphone in my hand and I'm going to get up and sing but on the basis that you said when nobody's listening what would I sing in the shower? It'd probably be something like um, "I Will Survive." Oh, yeah, because okay. that and you know, see, when you go to a party or something, that's always one that has all the women on the dance floor mm. waving their arms and dancing about. So yeah, probably three people. You get to choose which one you would do the following with, oh, and what and why as well. So the first scenario is go to dinner with. Second one is share a prison cell with. Mm -hmm. Third one, never see again. Oh, yeah, right. your three options are. Former UK Prime Minister Tony Blair, former BT Group Chief Exec Philip Janssen, and legendary musician Tom Jones. You know I come Tom from Tom what, same, never see you again? I come from the same town as Tom. <laughs> do you? Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. Yes, he's Welsh, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, Great, come on, he then. is, yeah. So he's from Treforest, actually, which is just outside Pontypridd, even though everybody says he's from Pontypridd. Yeah, I've been to um, 
I've been to many a concert. Mm. I, where I live, you know, I'm surrounded by his cousins and his family, half his relatives. I've been very fortunate as to have tickets to um, front row seats, which he always refers to as the family seats in his concerts. And, um, and yeah, so I've seen Tom quite a lot. He's um, known to frequent my local mm. on the basis that his family live there. And actually, sadly, that's where they usually have the wakes for various funerals. And he's normally there. And, um, but I guess, but do you know what? What, what would I want to do out of all those things? I guess, well, I've been to his concerts. I've mm. seen him in the pub. But I've never actually sat down and ate my meal with him. So probably I'd go to dinner. Probably that. We were yeah. expecting the same from you, Andy. Tom, uh, well, it'd be one or two. I get either. Uh, he did sing a song about jail, didn't he, Tom Jones? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I remember. But yeah, I probably on the basis of the three people you mentioned and mm -hmm. putting the three areas you put in, I think I'd have no option but to go for dinner with Tom Tom Jones, which I'm I'm sure would be absolutely enjoyable. We yeah. could go together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little party. All right. Yeah. As long as he's paying. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you can afford it. So, Philip Jansen. Mm -hmm. So, on the basis that he's the outgoing CEO, mm -hmm. and we did fall out a bit, and Andy mentioned earlier about building relationships, and that's with the new CEO. Oh. I don't suppose we necessarily would have to see him again, mm -hmm. but I would wish him all the best in his new endeavours. That is the kindest possible answer you can give to someone you'd never want to see again. Great. Uh, <laughs> and so then I'm imagining Tony Blair, you'd share Joe. Uh, well, to be well, honest, yeah. yeah, you'd have to, wouldn't you, really? Cause well, my, 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 <laughs> I, th I think that's the obvious answer, because I believe he should have been in jail. I was going to say, some people thought he should have been in jail anyway, yeah. but, you know, so, whether I, mean, I deserve to be I, there I, too know, is a whole other thing. thing. Is, I'm sure I could convert him. In some respects, if he was in solitary confinement, or not going to be solitary confinement, two years in the same cell, I think I could convert him after a while uh, to my way of thinking about this. So, uh, you know, the yeah. second person to come on the show and say that, that the person I'm going to be stuck in a jail cell with, I can convince them to be better. I, I, I can convert yeah, them. Yeah, I think I could, yeah. See, I, I was wondering if this question would come up earlier, then uh, if you'd asked the question and not given the names, I might give you some some different answers, but Philip Jansen, I mean Philip, a little bit like like I mean I don't wish anybody any harm uh, at all. I, I really don't. But um, it'd be fair to say Philip and I did not uh, agree uh, on things. We didn't see eye to eye. I believe a, a um, vehemently that uh, he said things uh, when we were having private conversations about me, which I took very much exception to. And I would never forgive him for, uh, uh, and so uh, and n I, I've worked with many CEOs over the years. None of them would ever have said the, what he said to me. Uh, so yeah, I can't forgive him for it really. But you know, I, I mean, I wish him you know all the best in the, in the future. I've no doubt Philip will Philip will not be worried uh, when he when he gives, gives up BT. Mm. He'll survive. He'll go along somewhere else and become a chair of some other big company. I've no doubt. And yeah, well, no, I was going to say best of luck, but I don't really think I mean it. <laughs> well, at the very least, all three of you, uh, no, you agree on all three of them on what you do with each of them. So I appreciate that. Um, guys, thank you. Really appreciate it. Is there any final messages you want to give to our members out there? Well, I think, look, we've talked about the proactive agenda. What I say to the members is, look, get involved. Get involved in the CWU. This is your union and you can make it what you want it to be so yeah get involved talk to your colleagues make sure they're in the union too make sure that we grow this union and we have more members that is in all of our gift and my message to them would be please do that and the other thing is please make sure that we have your feedback make sure that you feed in through the branches and through our structures because we talked about being interactive and making sure that we get messages from the members so that we know what it is our members want because part of our proactive agenda is making sure that what we are doing is advancing the things that our members want to see not just what we might think or what our activists might think what the members want to see so get involved give us your messages give us your feedback just basically make sure that you you are making this your union you know, I think I'm going to have to start on the basis of thanking the membership, uh, thanking the membership for the support over the years, 
uh, in my pos in the position of the DGS, uh, as Karen said earlier, it's been an absolute honour uh, uh, to be the Deputy General Secretary of this union, uh, and you know, and the members elected me there uh, on a few occasions uh, to that position. So thank you all for it. We've not always agreed. I've not always agreed with some of the members. Have always, but that's 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 democracy, uh, and that's uh, the, 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 what we need. We need to have views. We need to have that interaction with each other. We shouldn't always agree on everything. People's views are very important to us. So what Karen said about participating is really important. And I will say to you, not only should you participate when we have discussions uh, on policy, but you should really participate when it comes to elections. Mm. And make sure the people that you're putting up for any positions, whether it's in the branch, whether it's at a regional level, whether it's at a national level, are people that you've got faith in and people that are going to express your interests at whatever level they work in. So participation is really important. So, And thanks, everybody, for your support over the years. Amazing. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for coming on. Thank, Thank you. you. Really appreciate it. Now, we have some brilliant episodes coming up as well, but if there's something or someone you'd like to see, comment below, let us know. Thank you to everyone who has tuned in. You're helping us build something really new and unique in the trade union movement. Until next time, stick with the union.